our adventure continues as we head east towards the Spanish coast. It's time for a change of pace as we prepare to explore the culture and colour of Catalonia's capital. So we are heading to Barcelona. Hola, Hola. and welcome, welcome back, back to Flora, Flora and, and the Novice, Novice Explorers. Explorers. Last time you saw us, we had just finished our Montserrat hike and we were absolutely pooped. So we took a few days out and wild camped in the beautiful area of Catalonia up in the hills. They really did provide us with some of the most stunning wild camping spots we've had. Pure solitude and beauty. It was absolutely amazing. And so, so quiet too. One of the best things about van life is how varied your adventures can be. If you don't like your surroundings or simply want to change them, You've just got to put the key in the ignition and drive off a few miles to completely change your world. Total freedom and flexibility is one of the obvious benefits of van life. So visiting Barcelona was on our bucket list and as we're heading down the east coast currently, I think paying it a little visit is a must. So after arriving at Area Camper Barcelona Beach, we relaxed, had a much needed shower and got ready for the next day exploring Barcelona. We'll tell you more about the campsite later on in the video. So we awoke the next morning absolutely raring to go. But first of all, we had a short walk to the train station, but that's pretty simple and straightforward, easy to find. And there was an automated machine there where we bought our tickets. And for an adult return, we paid seven euros each. And the trains were reliable and they're every 10 minutes. They do get busy at peak times of the day. If you plan around that, it's actually quite an enjoyable experience. It only takes about 40 minutes to get into the centre. As you go into the centre, you pass through like different suburbs on the beach. It's like on the shoreline as it makes its way into Barcelona. So we felt as if we saw quite a lot. So we hopped off at Arc de Triomphe stop. And for us, that was very central for our explorations around Barcelona. And after about two days of traveling through that train station, it became very familiar quickly. And it leads you quite nicely into Citadel Park. So this is quite a hub of varied activity, especially in the daytime. There's skateboarders, cyclists, people taking tours on push bikes. You can rent bikes from there, which is quite handy and explore the city that way. There's daytime traders. Yeah, so much going on. And then in the evening as well, we walk through and it seems to be like an outdoor activity area. So you've got different groups of like those people over there are doing yoga and over there is like circuit training and rollerblading. And it was just like a really cool insight into how the locals live as well. By now, you probably know that Cal and I aren't really into museums. Instead, we like to immerse ourselves in the culture by seeing it, exploring it and most importantly tasting it. We were wowed by the food in Barcelona. I did plenty of research and stumbled upon James Blix. He has a YouTube series of Spanish food tours and Spain in general. The videos really helped point us in the direction of eating like a local and staying away from the tourist traps. We went on a gastronomic adventure that wasn't astronomical in price. So where to begin with our little food tour? Let's start with breakfast. We went to this very rustic and authentic little place where we had suithos and melandros, which is a little pot of molten chocolate with whipped cream and melandros are rustic homemade versions of uh, ladyfingers back in the UK. Now I must admit to having quite a sweet tooth, but even for me, it was a little bit much, especially for breakfast. So the next morning, we went for something slightly more savoury, so we headed to Hoffman Patisserie. Here we tried a ham and cheese croissant, and I can say it was possibly the best croissant I've ever had in my life. And this patisserie is known for different flavours and fillings in croissants. One of the famous ones is filled with mascarpone and with like an almondy glaze on the top. Breakfasts, that one wins for me. Croissant over the molten chocolate, which I never thought I'd say, but... <laughs> This trip's changed me. Up next was Tapas, where we went into different places having about two plates at a time. So first up we had patatas bravas, which is fried potatoes. In Catalonia, you have it with the bravas spicy tomato sauce, as well as the creamy aioli dip too. What did you think to that? Very nice, very nice. We've had that somewhere else as well. I see the interpretation of it can be different. Yeah. It wasn't too much of a departure from what you might get at home, but it's 
definitely tastier. The sauces, the condiments really did set it off nicely. And at that place as well, we had pan con tomate, which is basically pureed tomatoes with salt, extra virgin olive oil on toasted bread. Really simple, really cheap and very tasty. To the next spot where we indulged in a bottle of rosé carver which was eight euros 90 and was a steal but to order that bo whole bottle of carver you had to order two plates of food mm. little tapas plates so we ordered a fried sausage and black pudding which was really tasty but then i had to panic buy a, another plate which we had cheese and oil, which wasn't quite as good. It's a little bit dry, a little bit rubbery, um, <laughs> but we still ate it anyway with the carver. And we took a bocadillo away. I think that's how you pronounce it. Basically a sandwich, but it was melted cheese and serrano ham, and it was really nice. So we caught the train home with that. And then the next day, it was all about food yet again. We went to La Cova Fuma, which is a very small, rustic and authentic tavern in Barceloneta neighbourhood. It's very much for locals, so much so that there's no sign on the front of it at all, and it's open between nine and three. We ordered a jug of local wine, a plate of sardines, la bombas, fried calamari, and pan con tomate. It was excellent. So in this very unassuming restaurant, we spent about just over 20 euros, but we could have spent a lot, lot more. And I think it was really good value for money. If we bought similar back home in the UK with drinks as well, I think you'd be looking more like £40 probably. Um, but to get the whole experience as well, it was just so nice, wasn't it? It was yeah. very much about the experience. And this kind of place we need to look out for for future food stops and tours around Spain and in Europe in general. Finny? We then went to explore some of Barcelona's popular neighbourhoods. First of all, we headed into the Gothic Quarter and we saw a bit of uh, Barcelona's Roman history. There we saw some of the old Roman wall, the Temple of Augustus, and we also paid a visit to Barcelona's Gothic Cathedral as well. Now, this isn't the main cathedral in Barcelona, but it is one of. Now, apologies if I butcher the pronunciation of these places. Oh, I've never done that before. No, I'm, no, it's... I'm sure it'll be fine. It's not going to be a shock to the viewers. I doubt it. We checked out the famous bridge known as Brisby Rita, mm -hmm. which wasn't built in the Gothic Quarter. It has been an add-on since then. And we also went to check out the Parliament Square, St. Jean Square, which has the Catalan government on the one side and the Spanish government on the other. The Gothic Quarter is all about the narrow streets that kind of intertwine and loop back on each other. So it's quite easy to get lost, but in a way it was quite mesmerizing because it was all quite dark as well. And there were so many different things to see. It's a very nice and easy way to see some of Barcelona's history. So next up, we paid a visit to Ease and Play, which is home to some of Gaudi's masterpieces. And these are free to stare at from the street. <laughs> and there was quite a few people about there doing the same, taking pictures, which isn't surprising because no trip to Barcelona is complete without setting your eyes upon the beautiful buildings. So we checked out Casa Baccio and Casa Mila and the famous cathedral, Sangrada Familia. Oh. Boston, these pronunciations, mate, I can't believe it myself. It was quite a sight to see, but won't be finished until 2026. Sorry. <laughs> ah, stole your fact, mate. I like that, I like it. We also took a stroll down the landmark street of La Rambras, which is full of street vendors and well-known shops. Our favorite part of the street was La Bucaria Market. Here was a massive food market full of fresh veg, fruit, Olives. Confectionery. Nuts. Nougat. Filled to the rafters. It was chock-a-block in there. It was um, very, very busy, but it's clear to see why. So we had a cone of gammon serrano, which is serrano ham to me and you at home, um, with little breadsticks, and that was rather lovely. So the smell of this market was absolutely amazing. You've got the smell of the cheeses, the olives, but then over there you've got like fish frying at like one of these little tiny weeny pop-up like restaurants, mm. uh, coffee, all the fruit and veg, all the juices. There was so much going on, um, but we really enjoyed that trip, but we could have eaten so much more. Yeah, there's definitely something for everyone in there and it's definitely worth a visit, but like I said, it is chock-a-block. Very busy, so be prepared to walk around a bit like this, squeezing in between all the other punters. We also visited Elborn, which is trendy and vibrant and full of cocktail bars and restaurants. 
This is where the seashore used to be before the land was reclaimed and built on in the 18th century. This is where all the fishermen used to live. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Seashore. She shall, she shall, on she shore. <laughs> so being at the seashore meant we were at the beach again. Which we hadn't seen in about three months, so it is a very welcome sight indeed. Of course, we had a paddle, we checked out the sea glass, and it was very clean, mm. which I think I was a little bit shocked about. Uh, the sand was beautiful and the water was clear as well. And for the first time in a long time, it really felt like we were on holiday. It was quite weird to think that the van was parked up just down the road. It kind of felt like we'd taken a flight and it kind of hit us all at once that we were in Spain. So unfortunately, Barcelona is known as the pickpocket capital of the world. And we don't mean to be disrespectful or put anyone off, but we have heard a few horror stories recently from other van lifers. Now for us, we always want a bit of peace of mind, especially when we're visiting a big city. So to do that, we park our van in a secure motorhome park up. Now this does cost money, but like I said, it does give us that peace of mind so we can relax and enjoy our time. After doing a search on Park for Night, we came across Area Camper Barcelona Beach, which is in Valsar de Mar, 30 kilometers outside of the center of Barcelona. In peak season, it costs 20 euros. Out of season, when we are now in November, it costs 14 euros. It's got all of the amenities that you would expect. Free electric, one euro showers, which were nice and clean, toilets, wash machines for an extra cost, emptying facilities for your black and gray water, and it's dog friendly and family friendly. Everything was automated. So as you go in, there's a barrier and checkout was also automated with like a pay machine but that only takes cash the only other drawback was that it didn't have any drinking water available another little issue we came across was on the park for night app it stated that it was a 40 minute cycle trip into the center of barcelona after asking at the reception where to go it was going to work out to be about two hours instead and that was our original plan in the end we caught the train which was possibly a better plan anyway because it was only a 10 minute walk from the motorhome car park so for our two day break in Barcelona, we spent just under 150 euros. Bearing in mind we spent 80 euros on just food during our little mini break. We spent 28 on the train and 28 euros on the motorhome car park and four euros for showers. We think that is a bargain price compared to what flights and accommodation would cost. I don't even think you can get an Airbnb for 14 euros per night. No. Don't get me wrong, we could have spent a lot less in Barcelona, but by now, you should know that we are food obsessed. Flora and the Novice Explorers love food. <laughs> so in conclusion, we are both extremely happy that we paid Barcelona a visit. We really, really enjoyed our two day break. The city was vibrant and there was a lot of stuff to see and do and the tastes and smells were just brilliant. Yeah, the food that we ate in Barcelona made us so excited for the rest of Spain in general. It was just really, really exciting. Great vibes. I don't think we once felt unsafe or um, at danger of anything happening to us. No. We, had, we didn't feel at risk. It's got really good vibes, but I think as long as you keep your wits about you and be a bit streetwise and sensible with things that you do, everything will be cool. Mm -hmm. So that's our Barcelona visit wrapped up for you in one quick video. We're sorry we couldn't vlog properly. We are working on it, but <laughs> it's not really our style, is it? It doesn't come naturally to us. So this is a way of sort of getting a video out there of, of our experience in some sort of informative way. We're just trying to mix it up a little bit. Maybe some of you found it more informative and fun than usual. We don't know. Give us feedback down below in the comment section or give us a like if you liked the video. If you want more information, like where exactly we ate and what exactly we ate and all the different neighbourhoods, there's loads more information on our blog about it. I've done a specific post. As always, thank you very much for watching. We appreciate any and all feedback down below. Get in contact with us. We love hearing from you guys and we'll see you in the next video, which will be... Potentially Valencia? Well, it'd probably be our trip down to Valencia, which we've got to get a move on and do that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Oh, and don't forget that bell button as well, because that's going to notify you when we upload that next video too. You don't want to miss these videos. Mm -hmm. Toodle pip. Come on.
going to have a good day today. Three. Have a nice egg bap soon. <laughs> Three, two, one. So unfortunately, Barcelona is known as the pickpocket capital of the world. Uh, we don't mean to be disrespectful or... or Three, two, one. So, by now, you may know that me and Cal aren't particularly into museums. Instead, we like to immerse ourselves into the city by seeing it, tasting it, smelling it. Oh, we also took a stroll down the landmark street of La Ramblas. <laughs> Did I get it wrong again? La Ramblas. You went, La Landmark, La Ramblas. La, La Ramblas. La Ramblas. We also took a stroll down the landmark street of Lambrombra. <laughs> what was it? La, La Ramblas. La Ramblas. La Ramblas. So being at the seashore meant we were at the beach. Which we haven't seen in about... I said sin. Your mum's going to kill us. Three, two, one. So being at the seashore meant we were at the beach. Which we haven't seen... <laughs> <laughs> the Gothic Quarter is so many narrow streets. We also went to explore. Now, apologise. <laughs> we woke up fresh and ready to go, and we took the. So we woke up. We were. <laughs> it's lavender, I think. This.